Excellent. So glad to be here with you. So glad to be back with you. So glad that my husband did a massive, wonderful job in the sharing over the last couple of it have been months, couple of weeks, couple of months, couple of weeks. Which one? He's going to let me know. <laughs> Has it been a couple of months? Tell me, tell me, tell me. I think it's been a couple of weeks. Yeah. Oh, you cute. Yes. Thank you, ma'am. I try in my in my late stage in my late 40 stages come on b jack the b jack and the brie jack are on at the same time bless you all so good to see you i try to stay listen next year we'll be 50 and we're gonna still be looking like we're 25 amen god bless you two months to be exact i knew he was gonna tell me yes he did some good teaching over these last two months and i'm so grateful for the ability to be in partnership with someone who can sing and who can teach preach and do all of the other kind of stuff he's starting to get he's starting to get dates to minister at churches he ain't telling nobody but i think the people just be keeping an eye on him just to see what's going on with him so i'm so grateful so grateful to him um thank you because with all of this studying sometimes it's just a lot to do something else um, you have not. Okay. It's a lot to do something else. And so I'm so glad that I don't have to carry this weight, this phase, this time in my life by myself. And so really, really appreciative for him. I told them, listen, I'm going to jump in here for December. Let me jump in here and, um, and, um, do something for these last few weeks. We'll probably go three weeks because we got the holidays. We want people to enjoy them. Um, I might get on here and do and just do a chat just because I want to, but it may not be a teaching per se. So um, keep an eye out for that. Let me tell you, I hope that everybody had a wonderful Thanksgiving. We had a great time, had great fellowship, great family, great food. I'm asking my husband for us not to cook next year. I am over the cooking thing. I want the fellowship. I just don't want the work. So y'all pray between now and next year that we can get away from cooking and do something else. He is committed to Thanksgiving. I'm committed to it too. I'm just committed to it in a different way. Somebody help me, help me, help me <laughs> so that we can be encouraged with this peace. But God knows we had a great day. It was even um, a good day to cook. Now, listen, I can cook. It's just not the chore of life that I prefer. So I'd rather clean or reorganize a room versus cook. That kitchen thing, that's his thing. But when I have to, I set my mind the day before in order to get myself together so that I can. And it was sensational just having that opportunity to do that. Watch, while he worked, I will say that he prepped the night before and gave me instructions for his items. So I was watching his items while I was preparing my items. <laughs> Our partnership be funny sometimes. It is. It's hysterical. And then um, just really grateful for um, Kara coming into town. That was a blessing. We were sniffing around trying to figure out if she was coming into town. And I think everybody was trying to, enough people was trying to hide it, but I was feeling something. And then all of a sudden, Brian said, listen, let's just put a chair out just in case. I don't know if he was in on it, but I was really excited about her being able to get back home at least get you some heat for a little bit before going back to your cold city. So grateful that you um, made it back safely, that you're on, that everybody had a good experience. Layla is still in the Pennsylvania, Delaware area, hanging out with friends. So she's still in the, in the cold state doing what she does. And so keep her in your prayers. I'm going to ask you all to pray today for Elois Humphrey. She's had to be hospitalized and y'all know that that's my girl. I love her so much. She's a wonderful woman, a wonderful woman of God. She's got, she's had some experiences. I won't go into detail, but she notified me of it today. And so keep her in your prayers, just keep her in your prayers and I'll keep you posted as it relates to how she's doing. We are a praying community. We believe in prayer and we want to make sure that even as we dismiss from this place at the end of this session, I will be praying for you all. Listen, type in the chat if you need special prayer requests. I want to pray for you. 
listen, if there is nothing else that we have done that we incorporate in anything that we do is that one of the things that even our community up north, they know, they know, listen, if we, when we pray, we see. And so we expect to see because we pray. And that is one thing that we held hostage to prayer. Apostle Joyce taught us how to pray. That was something that she always encouraged me to do as a spiritual leader to don't forget to pray don't forget to consult god always incorporate him and include him in what it is that you are planning and let god keep the pencil and the eraser you set the plan let god have the eraser right and so we are always continuing for that b i see you we're praying for paris anybody else got any prayer requests i want to make sure that we grab them towards the end make sure you type it in the chat now while i know that we are on webinar I want you all to keep engaging with me. Type in the chat, you know, talk to me while we're going through the teaching because it lets me know if it's hitting you where you need it to hit you. So it's important that we do this. It's important that we get this space. Um, so we definitely want to make sure that we honor everybody's prayer and prayer requests. If you want us to pray for you specifically, list that. If there is something in particular that you want prayer for, we want to make sure that we cover that space. All right. I also want to remind you, those of you that are local to the area, remember we are do we are still doing grief counseling um, here through Transformation Church. We are partnering with Transformation in order to accommodate the holidays for individuals who may be experiencing challenges during the holiday season. While the holidays are nice, we cook, we decorate. We do all of these kind of things. We do Black Friday shopping. The holidays are not always great for everybody. So as a clinician, I always want to be mindful of how people are taking care of themselves mentally. So um, we are providing grief counseling every Friday from 7.30 to 8.30 at Transformation. It is on the announcements. You can see it there and it is on the website. It's on the Evolution Church website and it is on the Coach She website. So the information is there. Go take a look and we will put up the announcements at the end of the teaching as well so that you can see that. If you are local and you want to attend, please do so. If you know somebody who may need to attend, send the flyer to them. I want to be able to support those individuals who are experiencing grief and loss during this season it is so important also let me tell you i was inspired even by that experience to do a virtual group on thanksgiving day so thanksgiving at what was it what time 11 to 12 yes we was able to allow opportunity for individuals to have space for whatever it is that they're feeling as it relates to what they are experiencing or going through during that time. And so for that hour, we was just able to provide support, have people share what they were experiencing. Um, you know, when you lose someone, it could be 50 years later and individuals are still I'm reminded of those days, reminded of the challenge. Sometimes you are irritable and you don't even know why. You might just be experiencing a moment of grief. What blessed me so much is that um, I talked to my mom one day and probably a couple of days ago, because I didn't reach her on Thanksgiving, but maybe yesterday I was talking to her and we just had a conversation. She said, I saw the note that you were going to do a group, a group, um, a virtual group on Thanksgiving. and I almost joined but I forgot about the time and then she started talking about my grandfather and my grandfather's passing how old is Sabrina 26 so my grandfather has been gone for 24 years 24 years and as my mom began to talk about that she could still feel it like it was yesterday and I remember that day when she called I remember he had had you know a surgery and he was recovering from it and he had developed a clot, which they call a pulmonary embolism, and he did not recover from that. I remember that. We think that because it's so long ago that people should move on, get over those things. But when you've been housed in a family unit, when you've been nurtured well in a family dynamic, you will miss them at the most inopportune times and grief can overwhelm you. So it's important that you are authentic, be honest with yourself, 
yourself, be honest with the reality that these things happen and share it because you're not just sharing it for other people to hear it. You're sharing it so that you can now start to have some relief within yourself. Grief, the loss, the experience never goes away. There will be reminders at anniversaries. There will be reminders at birthdays. There will be reminders at Mother's Day, Father's Day, whatever significant event comes up. It's going to be reminders, but we have the ability to provide support and give individuals or assist individuals in those areas that they need support. Lastly, I'll say this. One of the things that came out of that group, the virtual group experience is the ability for individuals to set grief plans. What does that mean? A grief plan is simply the opportunity for someone to develop the way that other people can provide support during your time of grief. Why that's important is because oftentimes people don't know what to do with your emotion. And so while things are sober and you are in touch with yourself, it's important that you be able to say, the holiday is going to be a bad day for me, but this is what I need you to do for me. I need you to give me half a day for me to be reflective. Then by 12:15, I need you to call me. I need you to call me at 12.15 to just check in with me, make sure that I'm good. By 12.30, you're probably going to need to be working on getting me out of the house so that I can start to spend the rest of the day outside of my head and thinking about good thoughts. You know, people, those simple things will help individuals help you be able to continue to grieve, mourn, and then cope. That way you're not stuck or lost in your own feelings. So I'm putting this information out there, right? Because I think that it was important. I think that people can benefit from being able to manage grief symptoms versus allowing the symptoms to manage you. So hopefully that will help you. I wanted to take the time to be able to provide that information to you. Yeah, and pray that it will benefit you. And I am doing it again for Christmas. So it will be in meeting format. It won't be in a webinar style. And so you won't be able to hide behind the chat. But I promise you that if you join and if this is your experience, there are many other people experiencing the same thing that you're experiencing. And they may just be a little bit ashamed or a little bit shy. Consider coming to support, being supported and receiving support. It will be a blessing to your whole life. We will do it again for Christmas. I'll notify people on social media and in the texting opportunity so that um, people can see that and then have that experience. Okay, so you know I haven't been here for two months, give or take, so I'm now trying to remember about all of the things that are going on. Just from a Coach C perspective, let me tell you, we're in Cyber Monday sale. Cyber Monday is taking place all week. We are at 50% off any kind of session or package deal that you can imagine. Friday is the cutoff time. If you desire to get in on sessions, a session is $100. Um, a single session is $100. You can get it for $50 right now. You can grab as many as you need right now while the sale is going on this week. We probably will not do this again until maybe Mental Health Awareness Month, which is May. So if you want to save a couple of dollars, if you have a couple of extra dollars, get in on the sale. It benefits you and we can continue to support you from a mental and emotional perspective. Okay? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's it. I'm searching my mind right now. Let me see. Anything else? Everywhere else? What else is going on? We are in the middle between now and Christmas. Oh yeah, let me tell you that we have been in worship, worship. Evolution Church, we meet second and fourth, right? We still do that. We do it in a more um, contextual environment. It is more closed in. I believe in developing in this season individuals who are coming together through relational ties more than just logistical ties. And so at the moment, by the end of... September, we came out of the hotel. We had some planning issues with them in any way, but we realized that this was something that the Lord had been setting us up for. And we, I don't know if we wasn't really paying attention, but we was paying attention. <laughs> and so my husband was able to call it. He said, I feel like we're just going to be moving 
to another location at some point or doing some things that's going to serve the needs of the people. And as we prayed over that week, I started to realize that the Lord didn't want us to necessarily be so locked into a place as much as he wanted us to understand that we were the, we were the location. We are the space that we house God everywhere we are, wherever we gather, wherever we come together, that is where God is. And so that became more of the priority versus having open, um, open spaces that we could potentially do things in or not. People may potentially come visit or not. We also wanted to continue to serve our distant audience virtually. So we have a hybrid model. We see people in person, we see people virtually just like we do on Tuesday nights. And so we want to continue that trend. We are in the process of building neurodiversity. Yeah, y'all probably saying she talking a whole lot. Why is she on this high? I'm always on a high when it comes to the work that the Lord has positioned us for. So we are in a space of really just building this neurodivergent audience, allowing this space to be in an environment that is friendly for neurodiversity. Um, we want to encourage that inclusivity, that diversity, the difference, even in spiritual realities that people um, carry and have. Everybody doesn't fit in the body the same way. And we want to foster that kind of connection that brings us in the company of other individuals that may look strange and be different. They would be creative yet inventive, expressing the glory of God and not just sitting, absorbing a church experience. And so we are actively working towards those pieces. And I, pr I ask that you would pray for us because when we get together, there's a, a bunch of things that happen. It happens spontaneously. It happens by the move of the spirit. And we thank God for his presence with us. So join us every second Sunday at 3 p.m. Every fourth Sunday at 3 p.m. We will put the notifications out there. If you're at distances, you're always welcome to join us virtually. And if you are local, you are always welcome to join us in person. Let us know and we will send out the information so that you can know where to come and be connected to this neurodivergent environment. We are building and it's a nice build. Um, Melissa, Melissa, I see your prayer request. I see it, spiritual growth. We're in transformation. All of us are transition in life. Yes, and I need strength and focus and we got you. Melissa, thank you for sharing that. We appreciate it. Malika, oh, y'all just calling out the beauty tonight. Yes, I'm getting, I look cute, I'm beautiful. Come on, thank you, Malika. I really appreciate that. Thank you for you all noticing that. Listen, we got to beat her every now and again so that her can show up looking like she belongs somewhere. Amen. <laughs> Thank you so much. Listen, I'm feeling the energy of my brother who has released himself from this life into the next life. Apostle Dana Davis developed this conscious shirt, these conscious wear shirt. You can't see the whole thing, um, but it's a conscious wear material. And we lost him this year. We lost him this year, but I felt him today. And I said, I'm going to throw on this shirt in honor of my brother. I don't know where we gonna well I kind of know where we're going tonight but I wanted to feel his energy even as we share tonight so this is to you Dr. Dana's we Dr. Dana Davis we miss you so much and we always honor your presence in our life and in this ministry all of the information that he shared with us that keeps us moving forward yeah all right you all ready we are talking about tonight the empowered Christ and some of you will probably get to the point where you say, Apostle, listen, every, every teaching that you do is connected to something in some way, and you would be right. I am a thematic, what they call a thematic teacher. I am an individual that, um, that kind of um, goes from particular space, right? Um, there is a, there is a particular wind about me that is about empowerment and maximization. You will always hear me encouraging, um, using silver lining pieces. And I think the gospel, the honor of the gospel of Jesus Christ, 
is the honor of taking the gospel of Jesus Christ and using the Christ and putting the Christ name on us. Yeah, we're going to get that in a minute. Okay, remember I said that. That is the honor of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I want you to recognize this. I want you all to be paying attention to me tonight in a real significant and serious way. We are coming to the end of this year, of course, and most people, if you haven't noticed, people are putting out there their thoughts, their desires, their predictions, their prophetic releases, all of that. And we are looking at what 2023 will bring to us. We're trying to find encouragement. We're trying to find amusement. We're trying to find what purpose is moving forward. And every year, we have this expectation that the man or the woman of God is going to speak a word over us in order to propel us forward. But can I tell you something tonight? I feel this thing. I don't know what's going to happen tonight, but I feel it. I'm telling you, listen, can I tell you this, that it is going to, it's going to be, um, we are going to have a rude awakening as it relates to individuals being able to define and declare what their year is going to be, what their life is going to be and how they move forward. We need more than just the woman of God or the man of God's word over our lives. We need a word inside of us that is going to propel us forward. Listen, I want you to start digging out the word of God that's over your life from inside of you. And you've got to get to the position where you understand that the word of God is very present with you. Just like you talking, fussing, cussing, and fighting. Find the word of God in you and speak that same word over your own life. Come on right now. I'm giving somebody validation. You think that you need another person's word, but I promise you 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 got the word in you that you can speak over you and it can set your whole year as a matter of fact it can set your whole life tell me this listen to this i am not offended when someone tells me that i know the word of god for me and i know the, the, i have the ability to speak that word over my life you know what i'm gonna say i'm gonna say that that's good work because you are now empowered enough to not need someone to shape you for you. You've been in tune with God for yourself to shape you for yourself. And we've got to get more people in this space of empowerment where they understand their space in God, their space in the earth. And I'm not talking about your gifts. Gifts are one thing. Gifts are those things that are given to us that make us a attractive, but empowerment makes you who you are. When you speak from a space of knowing yourself, then you are empowered to do the things that you are required to do. We were sent here to provide something to this land. We were sent here to provide something to this earth. We are positioned here to be able to submit to this environment, whatever it is that God has placed in us. And so I want you to think higher than what you have thought. I want you to think higher than your anxieties and your depressions and your lowly spaces and your loneliness. I want you to think higher because your value is not in who is with you. Your value is not in what happens to you. Your value is not in what people are ascribing to you. Your value is in what you know about yourself. You are another version of the I am. And whatever you do, whatever you do, you've got to get to the point where you recognize that you are the other version of the I am. And it's critical. It is key for you to live in that existence unapologetically. I'm not talking about rudely. I'm talking about unapologetically. You've got to have this experience because that experience brings about this confidence that every one of us are looking to have and what we need to experience. So tonight, I want to talk from this perspective about the empowered Christ. Now, you all hear my phone ringing because that is my daughter calling me for something that I have given her over several 
weeks. Now, I'm not going to respond to her. <laughs> but here it is. You know, we are always a mom. We are always something in some version. So we'll get back to her later. Let me share this. I want you to be paying attention to this teaching. I want you to be paying attention to it, okay? Yep. This is the teaching tonight. Y'all see it on the screen? Somebody say yes. The em empowered Christ. Empowered Christ. Y'all see it on the screen? Somebody say yes. Give me two people that's looking. He'll say yes. Mm -hmm. Empowered Christ. Empowered Christ. Y'all see it? Y'all see it. Empowered Christ. Empowered Christ. I want you to say that. Empowered Christ. I want you to say it to yourself. Say it like I can hear you saying it. Empowered Christ. And I'm going to explain to you what this actually means. What is Christ? Y'all see that? It came all on the screen nice and lovely. It revealed itself. Yeah, that's that's that good PowerPoint stuff, right? What is Christ? Christ is a Greek term which they have, which really is said in the Greek, Christos. Christos. In the Spanish language, you will hear them respond without the H, Christos, in there literal language okay so the greek term is christos but this christos or christ it means anointed y'all see that christos means anointed and so what is important here in this particular delivery of this terminology is that you've got to understand that this term Christ or Christos is a title and it's not a name. I'm going to say that again. The term Christ is a title and it's not a name. So when we say Jesus, there needs to be a V in the middle, a T-H-E. So that we properly say Jesus the Christ. Because what that simply means is that Jesus was the anointed. Y'all understand that? Somebody pipe back to me and say yes. Some of you have heard this before. Some of you are hearing this for the first time. I want to make sure that you have a clear understanding of the title of Christ. Because if you have a clear understanding understanding of the title of Christ, then you understand that the word Christ is supposed to be assumed to more people than just Jesus. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Every last one of us is a Christ in some form because Christ means anointed. Y'all see that? We have talked about Jesus Christ often we've used that in our cussing language yes we have <laughs> we talk about jesus the christ in service we assume that jesus and christ is one name but it is when you do further study the idea of the christ or the idea of the anointed one would suggest that the anointed is the anointed one or the anointing is listed for a particular purpose. So when you recognize that he is the anointed, Jesus, the anointed one, then you got to also understand that the anointing is only empowered when we understand what it's intended for. Can I help you with this? Because I think people assume or fling around the idea of their spirituality, believing that they can do all things because I'm anointed. I'm not anointed for everything. I am anointed for some things. And you've got to really get a clearer picture of what this reality looks like for you. Anointing is only empowered when we or when it or we understand what it is intended for. Okay, so Jesus, the Christ, in the book of Luke, and it piggybacks off of what it suggests in in the book of Isaiah, the, um, the 61st chapter, if you look at the book of Luke, chapter 4, 
verse 17. It says this, and then was delivered unto the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, they're talking about Jesus here. He found the place where it was written. And this is what was being shared. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Uh-huh. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And when Jesus, who was doing this reading, was finished reading this, at the age of 12, he closed the book. The scripture says that the eyes of all of them that were in the synagogue, which were the rabbis, they were fastened onto him. They could not believe that he had understanding like he did. And he was able to find his assignment that it was first given or suggested by the prophet Isaiah, but it was the word of the Lord or what was the assignment for Jesus. Jesus clearly in the scripture says, I know what I am sent here for. So when I know what the intention is, this is what I'm anointed for. I want you to understand it. I want you to hear what I'm expressing to you here, because when we talk about this, we talked about this in gifts, graces, and anointings. Y'all remember that teaching? We talk about the reality of there being no need for individuals to be jealous about anything, because there are things that people are specifically anointed to do. Can you do everything? Yeah. Will you do everything successfully? No. So it would be better for us to find our space of anointing and function in that anointed space. Okay? So I want you to understand that the anointing, according to Luke chapter 4, and I'm typing it in so that you can see it. Chapter 4, verses... Um, what is that? 17, 18, and 19. Verses 17, 18, and 19. I want you to hold on to it because I want you to read it. You need to understand that Jesus in this scripture, in this gospel, was very clear about what he was sent to do. He declared it out of his own mouth. And it made the anointing that much more effective because he knew what he was supposed to do with what he was sent to the earth for. Okay. I want you to understand that. So here's the question and I want somebody to answer it. Then if Jesus knew what he was anointed for Jesus, the anointing, then what are we anointed for? Have you ever just sat with yourself? and said, what am I here to do? What am I anointed for? What do I have this glow for? What do I have this particular mindset for? Why am I attracted to people in this way? Instead of us focusing on everybody else's life and everybody else's world, I promise you, hear me by the Spirit of God today, that if you would find enough interest in yourself, that the Holy Spirit will reveal your anointing and the intention and the direction of the anointing that he has given in you and glazed on you. Our country um, in particular, I remember when George Bush, the first George, was set as the president of the United States right? And I passed by, I was in some restaurant somewhere and someone had a newspaper and it said, Bush has been anointed. And when I read it, I thought that that was such a strange statement because at that time I only thought, here's what I'm thinking, get this. I only thought that church people could be anointed. <laughs> Until I recognized and did an additional study around the word anointing. And then when I did that additional study around the word anointing and related it to Christ, I said, oh, 
The scriptures tell us that there are people particularly assigned to do certain works. And our president and presidents before them and presidents after them are no different. As a matter of fact, in the Old Testament, we have this book of individuals that were assigned or appointed, or I'll use the word, anointed to carry the children of Israel. Moses was anointed to carry the children of Israel. Abraham was anointed to have his son Isaac. There were judges and prophets that were anointed in particular seasons in order to carry the people of God forward. Some of these same kings, priests, and prophets did good in the sight of God, and some of them did evil in the sight of God, and yet they were still anointed for this particular work. Listen, I want you to understand this word because we will only consider at times that God will set us up to have perfect people in front of us. And that's not the truth. The scripture talks about it this way, that he has set vessels of honor and he has also declared vessels of dishonor. We can get lost in the reality of what is good and evil, but you can also assume that even if something is good or not so good, that that thing or that person or that incident was anointed to serve a purpose. Can I bring it forward for you? you sometimes when you look back over the last three years you're trying to consider what the pandemic was anointed for my god and listen if you are like everybody else everybody has considered what the pandemic provoked out of us what the pandemic did for us what the pandemic produced in us the pandemic was a game changer for our entire world when I tell you, if there was nothing else anointed in order to shift the world, the pandemic was anointed to shift the world in a different direction. Did I like the pandemic? No. Did the pandemic bring evil results? Yes. But it was still anointed to shift the world into a new space that moved us forward because in some cases our world was stuck in a cycle that they could not often see. They could not see that we needed to shift. There were things that were unequal and unfair that would cause that needed to shift. There were people that were in position that needed to be out of position and that needed to shift. We needed family time that needed to shift. Churches needed to be checked about what they were doing that needed to shift. Our focus on relationships needed to be attended to and that needed to shift. There was so much that came out of this severely detrimental death experience, but it was still anointed to produce a purpose. So I'm asking you today, when you consider that Christ, the word Christ means the anointed, right? Then that title Christ gets added to Shazetta's name, Shazetta the Christ. Mm, I know. Come on, let's challenge your thinking right here. Because when you can't see yourself as the anointed and you only see Jesus as the anointed, you will not fulfill or walk out your full, complete purpose in this earth. You will struggle because you will always have an identity crisis. Yes, sir. You will struggle with your identity because you can't see yourself as an anointed vessel. You can't see yourself as an individual that deserves the anointing on your life. Can I tell you that the anointing is supposed to empower you like you use it to empower others? The anointing is supposed to bless you just like you use it to bless others. And when you don't understand that you are a Christ walking in the earth, you live beneath the privilege of what that anointing is supposed to bring for you. What are you anointed for? I'm not talking about what you're gifted to do. 
Your gifts will make room for you and bring you before great men. So let's look at that example. David was gifted to play the harp, but his anointing was to be king. The gift of playing the harp brought him before King Saul, but he was anointed to be king. So your gifts, we spend so much time, my God, yeah, yeah. We spend so much time. We spend so much time. I had a I had a I had to make sure that I say that correctly. We have we spend so much time specializing in gifts that once the gift opens our opens itself up for us, when the gift opens the door, we get in the door and absolutely do not know what to use the anointing for. I'll say that again because that was good for me. My gift of speaking will open the door, but my presence with the anointing is supposed to do something. Yeah, the gift is the tool. Hear me, the gift is the tool, but you have an anointing on you that once the gift opens itself up, once the gift opens the door, what are you going to do with that anointing? I'll wait. I'll wait. Because we are, we, we're spending a lot of time with the bling things. Oh, I sound good. Oh, I sing well. Oh, I, oh, I, you know, I can hold the note. Oh, I can do this. We spend so much time in our gifting space that we allow our gift to make us insecure. But we have never tapped into the anointing of who we are. Mm. Yes, sir. And so by the time we get that right, we are now lost about what I'm anointed to do. David used his gift. And the scripture says, yes, oh my God. The scripture says that he played until the evil spirit was removed from Saul. Saul had a mental issue. He was always in this anxious space. He was being processed or he was being provoked by an evil spirit and that caused him anxiety. He was up and down in his emotions. If I was able to diagnose him, he would have emotional dysregulation and he was all over the place because of all of the things that he had to do. And he called for the gift did David to come and play. And when David came and played, it soothed the evil spirit that was over Saul. God allowed David's gift to open the door so that David could get in and be presented before Saul. But David's anointing was preparing him to be king. What are you, what are we anointed for? Have you ever really thought about the anointing that is supposed to destroy the yoke? What your presence is supposed to do when you intentionally execute the anointing that is on your life? Have you ever thought about it? Have you ever really considered it? Have you ever really expressed the idea that what I'm doing is just the tip of the iceberg in reality of what God wants me to go in and break in the midst of a people, in the midst of a person, in the midst of my family, in the midst of my neighborhood, in the midst of my job. And listen, let me tell you something. Can I help you with this too? It is not in your, in your prayer. It is not in how well you speak in tongues. That stuff has been given to us in church constructs, but it does not work in individuals or with individuals who can't understand it. So what are we anointed for? Let me tell you where we start in our anointing. Number one, we were made to be human, period. Okay, I want you to see that. If you're not next to the screen and you're listening to me, I want you to come back to the screen. I want you to come back to the screen and I want you to read this. Our first anointing is to be human first. We are anointed. 
anointed to be an answer to human condition. And see, this is the thing that challenges people because if I don't get notoriety, then I don't see any value in my life. And that's not true. If I can't be acknowledged for what I do, then I don't have any value in my life. And that's not true. The reality is, is that we've done such a terrible job speaking of humanity in certain environments that people don't even want to be human no more. Mm, my. And listen, I don't care where you go. I don't care where you live. I don't care what you do. As long as you are in the earth, you will always be human. That's why I love the fact that Jesus had the ability to walk out a human experience. He said that we would be supernatural beings. We were never supposed to be super spiritual. We were always supposed to be supernatural. We were supposed to express supernatural ability. And if we are nothing else, we are called to be empowered, to be superhuman beings. We are supposed to maximize the expression of humanity. We are supposed to maximize the space that we are supposed to look, live, and learn and be human. We have spent so much time over spiritualizing ourselves that we don't even recognize that we've become bad humans, let alone bad Christians. Forget the title Christian. What about humanity? We become bad humans. Humans, we don't know how to engage people anymore. We don't really know how to love other individuals anymore. We don't know how to take care of our communities anymore. But we are positioning ourselves to be super spiritual beings. But he never made us that way, nor did he require us to become that. We are anointed, my God, to be human. And the scripture says that it is honorable for us to be human. That in our humanity, there is divinity. There is an honor of humanity that I believe that people have missed because it doesn't look spooky. It doesn't look spiritual. It looks like wretches undone. It looks like flesh that has gone awry. It looks like... <clears throat> It looks like individuals that cannot control themselves. But just because the narrative of this man-made scripture suggests that there is so much in our flesh that is not a good thing, it does not mean that humanity was off. Can I prove it to you? The reality is, is that if Jesus or if God himself thought that humanity was so bad, Tell me why he came to save the human condition. Come on, somebody, prove it to me. In our flesh dwells no good thing. Uh-uh. Flesh is a state of mind. It is not human condition. Nope. Flesh is a state of mind. It is not human condition. Come on, let's correct all of this tonight. Flesh is a state of mind. It is not the human condition. There is a reason why Jesus found value in the human condition. He came to save that which was lost. What was lost? It wasn't us being saved from hell to heaven. It was the reality of the value of human condition. Let me tell you, better than how you sing, better than how you preach, better than how you cook, better than how you mime, better than how you dance, better than how you write poetry, is your ability to be an empowered human. Better than anything else. Your ability to maximize your humanity is the greatest honor that you can give to Jesus the Christ. Because now when I take the Christ from Jesus and stick the Christ on Shazetta and put the Christ on Brian and put the Christ on Brianna and put the Christ on Malika and put the Christ on Kara and put the, the Christ on Melissa and put the Christ on Vicky, then we have, yes sir, empowered humans that can move mountains because they are empowered with the anointing that is intended to shake the earth. When you're doing what you do and you do it well, then that's an anointing that shakes the earth. When you are positioning yourself 
yourself in understanding why you are anointed to be in the earth, then you are shaking the earth. Humanity was positioned to be in the earth. Number one, human condition. Why are we here? Because God didn't want to continue to be here. What do I mean when I say that? He built this environment and said, I'm going to put people like me called humans there. So here's the scripture. Whatever they loose on earth, come on. I will loose it up here on their behalf because I'm giving them governing ability. Whatever they secure on earth, whatever they say is not allowable, I won't allow here because they need to understand that they are the human expression of me. It's divinity in humanity. And when you really understand the capacity of our humanity, you will no longer limit it to, I'm only human. I just heard somebody say that. And I heard them say it, and I could take it a couple of ways. Y'all pipe back in. You, we, and most times we have often relegated our humanity to our incorrect behaviors. <laughs> Woo, but can I help you with that? Anytime you relegate the divinity of humanity, the power of human condition to just your bad behaviors, you diminish your humanity, which is why you don't like being human. Yep. Can I say that again? Come on, somebody say, say that again, apostle. When you diminish your humanity to just your bad behavior, you diminish the reality of the value of humanity, which is why most people don't want to be human. We have made being human the worst condition in the world. When in reality, God said that being human is the best condition that we can be in. We just don't understand who we are or why we are. So we're busy bypassing humanity. We ignore our feelings. We don't want to feel nothing. We don't want to go through nothing. We don't want to develop through anything. We are avoiding being human in order to get to spirituality, in order to get to heaven. But it is here, my God. It is here that God wants us to advance humanity, advance his power, advance his purpose, advance his movement. It is here. And it is through humans that he gets to do that. So we have got to be in this position where we stop hating ourselves so much. We stop hating each other so much because we disregard human condition just based on people's bad behavior. Can I help you? We are more than just bad behaviors. We are good hearts. We are good thoughts. We make messes and even our messes are still human. We are empowered humans, which means that we are empowered Christ. We are anointed to be human. And that's a period. And Bree Jack would say on skates or on any other wheels, we are anointed to be human. And anything else that we try to pursue would be a direct violation against our humanity. That's why we should be advocating against people committing suicide, people that don't feel any hope, people that are lost and don't see any value in themselves anymore. You're trying to figure out why people are killing themselves. Please, it's more than just millions of dollars and more cars and more houses. It's more than just what they can't have. It is something in them that doesn't see their humanity as divine. And when you don't see your humanity, as necessary, you will destroy it because you don't know what else to do with it. Listen, we were made to be human. So for those of us who were busy quoting the scriptures, I was born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Can I correct that? David said that about his experience. That was not God's idea. Can I say it again? Yes, that was David's experience. That was not God's idea. Well, I was born in sin and shaping in iniquity. That's what David said. Can I tell you why he said it? Because he was depressed about his current condition. So 
David did what most of us do. We blame, woo! We blame the environment that we're in on our struggle. Instead of understanding that we have the power to change the environment that we're in. So David says, I'm born in sin. I'm shaping in iniquity, but that was David's story. That was not God's idea. We assume the wrong things. And listen, the reason why we get to assume that, right, is because it's in the scripture. But can I tell you that everything in the Bible is an example of somebody's story. That was their experience, and we have to read it like it was somebody's experience. Not always the word of God. It was their experience about God. Somebody say that. It was their experience about God. But it doesn't make it God's word. It was their experience about God, but it doesn't make it God's word. David gave us his experience about God, and we now use it in 2022 as our experience, and it is not true. It is not true. It is not true. It is not true. I was fashioned in the image of God. Come on here. When he spit me out, divinity came walking in the earth. I was fearfully and wonderfully made. You know who also said that? David. David was schizophrenic. When he felt good, he said good words. When he felt bad, he said bad words. Does that sound familiar? That's some of us. We could be having a good day Monday and have a bad day on Tuesday. And we post all of this nonsense on social media and people are so confused. They have no idea what's going on with us because you can't even stabilize your own emotions, but you want to encourage other people to do it. That's not empowerment. It's not empowerment. What is empowerment is maximizing our own humanity, learning about ourselves, understanding who we are, empowering ourselves as the anointed in the earth today. That requires us to have self-care, understand our self-image, understand our culture. Let me give you this definition, right? What is the human condition? Y'all at the screen? I want you to see it. I want you to see it. I want you to write it. My goodness. Yeah, it's been a while since I've been in this in, in this office under this teaching, right? You can tell. Yeah, you probably can. What is the human condition? In its simplest terms, the human condition is the positive and negative aspects of being human and the experiences that follow. See that? This interpretation can include events, and concepts such as birth, y'all see that? Growth, reproduction, survival, love, and death. In other words, the human condition is the fabric or the framework of where we start and where we finish. It is the expression of humanity. We have some, listen, let's talk realistically here. We have some good things that happen in our human condition and we have some bad things that happen in our human condition, but it's all the human condition. It's all the experience. It's all the ability for us to live forward and reflect backwards. You've got to be able to make sense of the reality of what God allows in your life through what you allow. I'm going to say it again. This is the space that we take ownership, right? You've got to really put greater perspective on what you allow or what God allows in your life through what you allow. That's why when older people get to their 70s, 80s, 90s, they spend time looking back. And in them looking back, they have the ability to say, you know what? I had some good days. And I had some bad days, but there's nothing that I would change because in the overall scheme of things, I've had a good life. That, that experience, that understanding, that perspective is really dependent on the phase of life that you are. In your 20s, you're trying to discover life. In your 30s, you might be thinking about settling 
down and exploring a different phase of life. In your 40s, you're like, okay, I'm coming closer to the half of my life. And so what have I accomplished at this phase? You think that in certain phases of your life that it's too late to do anything. But if you're paying attention to life and to the lifespan, the lifespan is expanding again. People are living longer. You can do things for longer periods of time. Pay attention to the trends. People are having babies later in life. They're having babies older in life. People are living into their hundreds and beyond. There is life. There is fullness of life that is being expanded. And God is allowing all of those things based on what the human condition does. But when we're so locked into just what we can receive, oh, I'm supposed to be a millionaire. Somebody's supposed to do this for me. I'm supposed to known for singing well and then I don't concern myself with anything else then you have removed yourself from qualifying to have the anointing to be able to insert yourself in human condition let me tell you you will always be human you will always be a person always in the aspect of living in this life because when you transition from this life to the next life I don't know what you're gonna be I don't know what I'm gonna be I have not seen what's after this life so I can't tell you I don't have a lived experience about it but I will tell you this your dishonor of your humanity now will either cause your life to be wonderful or cause your life to be miserable that's why we've got to be able to enjoy life when I look at that scripture and, and Jesus says, I've come to give you life and life more abundantly. What he did not say was that he came to give us better spirituality. What he did not say was that he came to give us um, more tongue talking ability. What he did not say was that he was going to give us more divinity. He said that he came to give us life. And my understanding of of life is living life in the construct of my own humanity so what does that say to us i'm glad you asked because i'm gonna end with this i'm glad you're in the phase of really trying to now look back there are people hear me when i say this to you there are people who struggle mentally because they don't understand their humanity they are always disappointed with their ability to not keep things at bay. I'm too emotional. You might, you, you may need to be. You know, I've got so much on my mind. Thank God that you have a brain. I've got this, I've got this, I've got that. This is not supposed to be happening to me because God said, God said what? God said what? God said that he was going to do this thing outside of you? No. You don't understand the reality of your humanity and your empowered space. The Christ that's you has the anointing to maximize humanity and obtain whatever it is that you are now anointed for. Everybody on this chat tonight will not experience millions of dollars. And so if you don't understand the human condition or your own reality, you will be depressed every time you don't make the money that you want to make. Everybody's not going to have that, but some people will. You've got to have a realistic perspective of why you were placed in this earth. Why you want the things that you want. Why you want people to know you for these things. Why, 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 why is it? That the things that you want hurt you so bad that you don't have it. And as soon as you can't get it or you can't see yourself getting it, you are in a depressed place. Why? You need to consider it. You need to consider, are you really living out the maximization of your humanity and your empowered state? Or are you just living for blings and things? Because the empowered Christ called you has fullness of life. And in different phases of your life, you're going to have different things. You're going to have luxuries and you're going to have hardships. You're going to have great 
faces of your life. And you're going to have some things that you're going to have to go through. Live long enough. You're going to lose your parents. You're going to watch your children grow up. They're going to lose their parents. You're going to get the career that you want. And then in a few years, somebody might be downsizing and you might lose that same career that you've given all your life to. You cannot be so locked into things that you do not honor your own humanity and understand who you are in the scheme of all of that. Because you are more powerful than what you have. You are more powerful than what you even can do. You are human and humanity, your humanity, my humanity is divine. I am empowered. The anointing, the Christ called me is empowered for the work that I am doing right now. And I find fulfillment in it. It pays me. I find satisfaction in it. I can do it all day, be tired and still do it because I have had the ability to tap into me being the offering that God put in the earth to express what I'm expressing now. Oh God, I want to stop people from taking their life. I want to stop people from having these up and down bipolar experiences because you don't know how to regulate in your humanity. I want to stop you from assuming that things make you who you are. Your humanity makes you who you are. And when you really recognize how divine you are, you will stop treating yourself like trash and you will stop treating other people like trash. Because humanity is divine. Humans. Empowered anointing is the anointing that we live out as human first, humans first. Next week, I'm going to talk about your individual spaces. And again, I probably have touch this in another teaching in some form or another, but I'm back here again, because here's the thing. If we don't, if we don't get this teaching requires us to continue to visit certain spaces. And sometimes it takes us hearing it more often than not. I remember when I lived in Chester and, and we, we was connected to a woman who used to bring her kids. She had a lot of kids. And at some point, I was starting early in the coaching space and my postcards were starting to get out in the city and her son saw my postcard somewhere and they said, Oh my God, apostle is famous. I said, Oh Lord, this is so funny. The mom called me and said, Oh my God, they saw your picture in a, um, on a postcard that said you're famous. And immediately the Lord, as I was listening to that statement, I got tickled. And I heard the word to whom much is given, much is required. I get it. But this famous thing that we got going on, that started to change for me because there was a point that I wanted to be known for what I did until I got a revelation about just being who I am is the best service to God that he could ever require of me. But I also realized that effective work brings notoriety to you. So the more I work in what I'm doing now, the more people are spreading the word. Am I trying to be famous? No, but the effectiveness of my work makes me famous. Why? Because I'm the empowered Christ. I have been able to direct. I understand now what's on me, why it's on me, what it's for. He's anointed me. He's anointed me. You need to be walking throughout your house all week. You need to be in your car saying he anointed me and then finish your sentence. He's anointed me to be in the field and the profession that I'm in. He's anointed me to be the spiritual leader to the group of neurodivergent people that we're called to be. He's anointed me to live in the state of Florida in order to observe and survive.
invade the land so I'll know what to do in order to shake this land that is in South Florida. He's anointed me to be able to speak a word in season. He's anointed me to be able to do group therapy. He's anointed me to be a clinician. He's anointed me for this. He's anointed me. What has he anointed you for? We're going to talk about that individual space next week. That's number two. But number one, he's anointed you to be human. And I think, can I tell you just what I think? That as much as we are trying to excel in our individual selves, your excelling individually is going to be as effective as you relate to the rest of your humanity. What does that mean? My relationships to other humans, my connections will speak to the, will, will open room and open ways and open doors to how effective I am in my individual gifts. Here's why. Because I need the respect of other humans in order to even hear me, receive me, listen to me. Let me tell you why that's important. Because many of us have burned some really terrible bridges with other humans. And we think it's okay because we treat other people like trash. But it's not okay. You're going to need those same people to open doors for you. And then we'll come back and say, watch this. And I want y'all to pipe back in. We'll come back and say that people are hating on me, that God is not opening this door for me. No, you close the door on yourself because you have no respect for other humans. Can I, can I preach this here in this little office today? You have no respect. So you close your own doors. Your gift was supposed to open it, but now your trash talk closed it. Now people don't respect you. Now people don't, don't like you. Now all of a sudden now you're isolated and you're going to be hidden in your closet because you didn't know how to treat other humans because you didn't realize that your first anointing is to be relatable. You didn't realize that your first anointing was to honor the humanity in someone else as you honor the humanity in yourself. Listen, you would not want people to treat you like you treat other people. Yep. Come on. Talk to me. Come on. Be honest with yourself. Come on. Be authentic. Come on. The reason why I can be a well to people, a safe haven, a safe space to people, is because God had to allow me to work through my own stuff that makes that made me can i testify that made me incapable of hearing people at the level of the anointing that he gave me <laughs> yes sir Woo! so he let me work some things out because he knew that i was anointed to listen i didn't know it but he knew it he knew that he put that grace on me so i had to get my ears together I had to get my confidence together. I had to get my confidentiality together. I had to get my demeanor together. I had to stop hating humanity because that's what Christians told me to do. They told me that as a preacher, you had to have a life set apart. You had to be isolated. Nobody could touch you. Nobody could feel you. Nobody could um, spend time with you. You couldn't relate to people. That's what the church told me. But I was called to help heal humanity. How was I going to do that? By spending days in isolation, being away from people. We got to get this corrected. 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 We have to get this corrected. It's your first ministry. First ministry. First ministry, first ministry. You want to be famous? Jesus was famous because he was touchable. He told people, listen, I'm going to heal you, but don't tell nobody. And you know what they did? They told everybody. <laughs> they told everybody and everybody came running. 
Yes. Came running. That's what my husband would say. B. Jack off of that lady that was in Delaware. I don't know her name, but it was funny. It's, he's still laughing about that. They went and told everybody and the people came running. Because they said, oh, you're the man that heals people. People don't want to be around ornery people. People want to be around people that heal people. Ah! Listen, I'm talking myself into hysteria right here. Right here, up in here, up in here. He wants, people want to be around people who heal people. Your nasty mouth has caused people to run away from you and you think it's God. Well, God is setting me apart. Come on, it's a lie. 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 We believe it because it looks spiritual, but it's a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. Your whole inability to be, to not be social is a trick of the enemy. You're isolated recluse. You can't trust nobody. It is a trick of the enemy. It is a trick of the enemy to not allow you to maximize humanity. Do you see? I'm telling you what we see in our offices. Individuals who are concerned, paranoid, delusional that everybody is after them because they have no real sense of the validity of humanity. And so instead of us getting healed through some things, we will rest on our fractures and our pain and our bruises and say that that's what we'll continue to hide behind because we don't want to heal to get back to relating to humanity. Come on, we got to fix this. We got to fix it. We got to fix it. We got to fix this because our work is not in the pulpit. Our work is on a different kind of stage. We don't need another praise and worship leader. If that's the maximization of your gifting, then I want you to think higher. I want you to think higher. I, listen, social media and the internet has blown the church idea out the water. Because there are stages in little cubes called Facebook Live. So the stages have changed. Are you paying attention? The stages have changed. The outreach has changed. The audiences have changed. There are people that will listen to you that live in Russia through a social media live. They're not in front of your faces anymore. They're everywhere. And if you don't even understand or respect the diversity that is right around you, how can you serve the Great Commission? Go into the hedges, the highways, and the byways. The pandemic, I'm telling you, has shifted our world into a multiverse. Listen to me, listen to me. It has shifted our world into a multiverse and our outreach is different. That's why you've got to be careful. I'm, I'm in this, I'm in this. Hold on tight. Let me text these people because I'm running late, but I don't want to stop this. Hold on. Yep, we good for this evening. Okay, hold tight. This teaching is taking me through. I'm coming. Listen, that's why you got to be so careful not to diminish your own humanity. Can I go further? You've got to be careful not to diminish your culture either. As African Americans, as Caucasians, as Hispanics, as African Americans, because most of us are probably African Americans on this call right now, we have got to honor not just our humanity, but our culture. Do not release it just because other individuals want you to look more like them. We are black and we are proud. Just like you can be white and be proud. Just like you can be Hispanic and be proud. It's one of the reasons why we've got to work through the differences in our diversity so that we can let people be who they are and still have the ability to come together. I don't want to be white. I'm never going to be white. I love 
African culture. I want to have gospel music. I want to have smooth jazz. I want to sing like we sing. I want to dance like we dance. I want to move like we move. I'm not knocking anybody else and what they do, and I'm going to enjoy that too. But I am not getting rid of me for the sake of somebody else. But I can appreciate somebody else. When you, when you develop true honor, you understand that it doesn't dishonor me when you honor you. You could honor you, and then also I honor me. And when we get together, we honor each other because we understand our humanity, our human condition, our ability to be empowered with the Christ that anointing that makes us us. So we knock down church walls. We are the church. We knock down buildings because we are the location. If I just take my happy self into a building, it doesn't make the building any more or less a building. I've just filled it with my energy. That's why when we say people have had church hurt, the building itself didn't do the hurting. It is the people who got used to dishonoring each other in their communities. They don't came to church and dishonored the same people there. We've got to change it. I'm empowered to facilitate the Christ on me in the way that God positioned it in me and positioned it for me. What about you? I'm anointed to do what? I'm anointed for this. And here's the other thing about anointing that is really powerful. When you are anointed to be in a space, you can take the heat of that space. That's why we deal with jealousies and envies. I, I, I come after it with a passion. Because you don't even understand what you do to yourself when you spend time in jealousy and envy. You really diminish yourself even more because you're spending so much time. Envy and jealousy requires you to focus on somebody outside of you or something outside of you. When in reality, if you would spend time dealing and developing yourself, you will be so full of the anointing that you are. That once you maximize that, you will have no room to be jealous of someone else. Jealousy and envy is diminishing to you. I want to have what they have. Then go get it. Go get what you're supposed to have. And trust that it is comparable to what they have for them. Envy and jealousy diminishes you. It does not diminish the person that you're envious or jealous of. You have an anointing. You are the anointed. Find out what that anointing is supposed to do and then do that. And I promise you will have fulfillment in it. You will have the strength to deal with what comes with that anointing. The great things and the not so great things. You'll have strength for that. But you cannot have strength trying to be me. In the space that I'm called to be. You're not going to have strength there. You are not going to have strength. Trying to take on the things that I'm supposed to take on. You're not going to have strength there. Just like I'm not going to have strength for. The things that you're supposed to take on. I'm not going to have strength for that. I don't even want to be you. I, I, I'm going to admire you. I'm going to appreciate what you bring. But I do not want to be you. Nope. No. No. I'm spending too much time focusing on my life. How about you get your life and let me get my life. And when I got my life and you got your life, then we bring those lives together and we be, and we be okay with each other. But you can't have my life. I don't care how good it looks to you because you don't know what I have to experience in my life. You don't want my life. No, you don't. You don't want my life. You don't want this anointing that's on me. It doesn't make it better than yours or not better than yours. You just don't want it because there are things that come with that. And that's not a grandiose statement. It is the truth. And trust me, I don't want what you have to experience. 
because you are anointed to handle that. So I wonder, listen to me, come on, hang with me for a few minutes. So I wonder the hardships that you're going through, because really when you go through hardships that are assigned with your anointing, it won't even be as hard. Right? But I wonder if you really think about the things that you're experiencing. Think about what you're experiencing as that you consider hardships. Are those really assigned to you? Are they assigned to your life? Or are you assuming hardship that belongs to the to somebody else's life or somebody else's life that you envy? Come on. Talk to me. Because there are some things that I have gone through. Losing children, having one and not having the other, having two at one time and losing one in another time. Everybody can't go through that. Everybody can't go through these shifts and these experiences. Consider what you are experiencing and determine if it is assigned with the anointing that is called you. I want you to be clear. Our first goal is to be humans. And with your humanity, I honor you. I hope you honor my humanity. I'm not talking about just honoring what you consider a woman of God. I'm talking about honoring me as a human. I have stress, faults, struggles. I have great things. I have great traits. I have great ways. I got all of that, but I've got some down days. I've got some, I've got some weird days. I've got some feelings at different points that come in and out and it makes me human. It makes me physical, emotional, mental. It makes me human. And human is, and even with all of those things, it's still divine. Can you honor my humanity? Can I honor yours? That's your first anointing. How about we work on that between now and next week? And let's get ready for the next segment of this teaching. Because I'm telling you, if you can't honor humanity, you are not honoring your condition. And that's your first anointing. This is what we were made. We make this world better or not better. The condition is an ebb and flow. Y'all ever see, um, they're coming out with a new version of it. I think it's Avatar. Yeah. And when they, and when they were surrounding the tree and they were working in an ebb and flow in order to all of them collectively were working around the tree in an ebb and flow, they were moving in sensation collectively in order to heal this person's body. Y'all remember that on Avatar? They're coming out with a new version of Avatar. I think it's going to happen underwater. There's something about this oceanic region that people are really, really experiencing and having um, aspects about. I heard that Black Panther was doing some underwater things as well. I think that there is attention being brought to the oceanic region for a reason. You all need to pay attention to it. Everything is not demonic. There are some things that are just cultural. Pay attention to it. The people in Avatar, they worked in an ebb and flow in order to save one because they knew the value of life. And they knew that if they lost this life, that it would diminish all of their life. Lastly, to hammer this point, Bishop Hezekiah Walker Someone wrote a song for him and it's simply titled that I need you to survive. I pray for you. You pray for me. I love you. I need you to survive. I won't harm you with words from my mouth. I love you. I need you to survive. I pray for you. You pray for me. I love you. I need you to survive. I won't harm you with the fierce energy of the word that comes out of my mouth. 
I love you. I need you to survive. Simplest terms. Honoring humanity should not hurt you this much. That's our first anointing. What are we going to do with that? We got to correct some stuff. And we got to realize who we are. Because if we're doing anything else to honor anything else and honor any other version or any other person without having a real understanding that we are human and human is divine. Human, being human is not a bad thing and it's not a bad condition. And I know for many of us, we've got to psychologically change that. You are supposed to be the fullness of the humanity that you are. Nothing else. You have feelings, you have emotions. I, 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 I'm recognizing now how much we have done when we tell people that they should not pay attention to their feelings, that their feelings don't matter. We have done a disservice to people. What in the world do you suggest your feelings do now? Now that you're not giving attention to them, what are they supposed to do? Tell me. Tell me what they're supposed to do when you were given emotion, when you were given feelings, what are they supposed to do now? They're supposed to what? Turn off? People will pray this crazy prayer. Oh God, you know, just take this desire from me. Take what desire from you? The desire to feel? The desire to experience life? To have sensuality, sexuality, all of that. You want God to take all of that from you when he gave it to you? Tell me what we're supposed to do with that. It was error. It was incorrect. I want you to understand it. I want you to see yourself in your own humanity as divine, as a nature that Jesus sacrificed himself to redeem, restore. Father, thank you for this time and thank you for this space with these people. I love you so much for the opportunity for us to rise in our frequency and to understand more and more of this human nature that you have called to be divine. I give you honor for it. I thank you for the people that will watch this video even after we have recorded this session live. I thank you for what you will bring to them and expanding their mind and their conscious space. We're praying for Elois tonight. Thank you for her. And thank you for the restoration of her body, heal her physical body, along with every other aspect of her that is out of alignment and out of sync. We're praying for Paris tonight that the understanding of who she is in, in the deep places of her soul will come to life and be realized. I thank you that you will work in her to heal her pain. That even as she is experiencing and expressing different areas of life right now, that even through divine intervention, that you will allow her to come to the reality of her true nature. Thank you for her. I speak a word of fullness of life in and through her, that even while she is experiencing many things, that you will keep her covered as she would go to some levels, that you won't allow her to go as far as the enemy would try to take her in order to trap her. God, give her grace, intercept her decisions <laughs> until she has enough will to intercept and change her own position. We pray for Melissa, even as she's walking through transformation, oh God, transitions in life, transitions on the job, transformation within herself. God, allow her self-perception to be that which you have designed her to see any level of cataracts, any level of eyesight, insight that needs to be changed. Let it be changed in the midst of her. Continue to move her forward and keep her in the confidence that it would take to keep moving forward in Jesus' name. We use the name of Jesus 
because he was the example that we follow to experience the fullness of human divine life. Thank you for this example. We can live now human divine life and we can maximize that through empowering the nature of the anointing that is on us, in us, for the particular purposes that you've sent us for. Thank you for this space. Thank you for this grace in Jesus' name. We give God praise for all of that. Somebody say amen before you leave. We want to let you go. I will say while you all are responding, piping back in, sending me notes, let me know if you've got some comments as it relates to this. This is Giving Tuesday. We're giving to charities that we desire. First of all, let me tell all of our Evo team partners, we are so appreciative to you for your time and offerings your seed you know that as you give it helps to expand the work even as we are revamping some of the events that we are planning for that it expands the work and we thank you for that you also know that in return there are things that are afforded to you as a result of your gifts we don't just want this to be a one-sided experience our partnership calls for exchange and so we are empowering we are making sure that people are mentally and emotionally stable and well. We use our profession with our people first so that they are not castaways while they're trying to serve other people. So we want to make sure that that happens. And so we want to, and we thank you for the honor of allowing us to be your spiritual leaders. That covenant is priceless. We thank you for your honor of us. That does not go unnoticed or lightly. However, today, in addition to that, rather, today is Giving Tuesday and there are some people that are giving to charities of their choice. I hope that you will commit to doing that, whether it is this charity, this is a 501c3 tax deductible organization. You can give here if you so choose to add an extra seed or you can give to whatever other charity of your choice. There are so many that are in need of donations so that they can continue to serve the work of the purpose of serving humanity so find yours and release your seed there to them if that's what you desire to do i just want you to know that in you giving to evolution church this is a certified tax deductible 501c3 organization and everything that you give here will allow you a tax deductible write-off so it is safe ground and it is safe territory if you desire to do that you can go to the website and give your contribution. Um, the information is there. Some of you have that Cash App information. And then our partners specifically have their own private portal that they can give to directly. So feel free to do that at your leisure. Um, this has been a phenomenal teaching. I'm going to go back and listen to myself. And I normally don't do that. But there were pieces in here that I want to re-listen to. I want to hear. And so I hope that you were blessed by it. I hope that it has inspired you to consider the perspective of human life, human condition, and how you're supposed to live and how you're supposed to do what it is that you do. Do not neglect others because you haven't learned how to manage being in relationship with other. We are all human. We'll deal with the next segment of this next week. If you have any questions or thoughts or anything that you want to add to that, please let us know. We're going to hang out here for a few seconds and then we're going to leave so that we can get to our next assignment tonight. So pipe in with your feedback. I'm going to be reading your chats for a few minutes.
a James Hall fan. like that when I get some rest, right? 